My partner and I have an adorable Italian greyhound named Hammy. We're always asking, where's the boy? Where could he have possibly gone this time? In October, when we participated in Inktober, one of the prompts was Discover. And that's when inspiration hit us to make a mini game called Find the Boy. While brainstorming different ideas for different Inktober prompts, we landed on the idea of creating a game where you had to find Hammy. The concept is like Where's Waldo or Like I Spy. It's a picture hunt where you have to identify the correct Hammy. For the logistics, we gave ourselves one day to create this game from start to finish. We also decided to make this game in Figma as my partner and I would be able to collaborate and work on the same file. My partner actually doesn't really have much or any experience with game development. The only art experience he has is doing Inktober with me for the past one to two years and also the painting dates that we do together. I'm also pretty new to game development, so we definitely had our work cut out for us. But given those limits, let's dive into how we made it all happen. As mentioned before, the game concept is pretty simple. It's to find Hammy, but we went back and forth on some details. Would there be tons of different characters in one hidden Hammy? Or would there be a crowd of hammies with one odd one you'd have to spot. In the end, we went with different variations of hammy with the players needing to find the specific requested version. We chose this concept for its simplicity, knowing we only had one day to complete this. Let's now dive into the art process for this game. For the art, my partner and I have pretty different styles. We both kept it simple, flat colors, minimal shading, though I didn't mind if our art wasn't perfectly cohesive. For a quick personal project, I really wanted the game to feel fun and true to both our styles rather than enforcing strict guidelines. My partner doesn't have a lot of experience with art since he is in a STEM field. However, I think he is super talented and his art is very fun and quirky. For me, I talked about it in my last videos. I am not a confident illustrator, but I can put something together if needed. We started by drawing different hammy iterations at around 10, 11 a.m. With no strict guidelines, we just drew different versions of him in our own styles. I ended up creating 10 iterations and my partner made 18. After we finished drawing, I separated the hammies and dropped them into Figma as components. It took us a few hours to draw and some time for me to separate everything as I ran into some technical errors. Now that we finished the art, it's time to set the scene. For the setting, I wanted a retro vibe with a mix of illustration and pixel art. With a one day limit, there is no way I could fully illustrate each background, so I decided to rely on stock imagery. Once I found my images, I used Photoshop to pixelate them, giving them that retro feel. We even added side characters like a polar bear and a fox using the same process. For the three settings, we chose one, an arctic snowy landscape, two, a city landscape, and three, a farm landscape because Hammy kind of looks like a cow. With our scene set, let's jump into how we built the levels. Since we didn't have that much time left, we limited the game to only three levels. My partner never used Figma before, and though I used it a little bit, I am also still learning. We ran into the technical issues like components ending up on the wrong artboard, accidentally deleting each other's progress, and near the end, we realized that when you have something linked, the cursor changes from an arrow to a pointer. So then we had to spend some time linking the other components to other parts of the page, so it wouldn't be so easy to figure out. Regardless, we powered through. Each level had a specific cami to find, and we even added a little narrative to each level to make it more immersive. 
My partner worked on the levels, and this was his logic and thinking on how he created them. For the first level, he wanted it to serve as an introduction slash tutorial level. He didn't want to make it too hard, but he also wanted to introduce a bit of a challenge so players know what to expect in the upcoming levels. For the second level, he ramped up the difficulty by playing with different angles, more pronounced variation in sizes, and also used hammy components that are similar in appearance. The last level is definitely the most difficult one. He wanted it to reflect reality in the sense that Hammy always hides from us in unsuspecting places when we try to look for him. Now that everything is all set up, let's do a playthrough. Because Figma doesn't support music, I'll be adding that in post-production. I also won't reveal where the actual Hammies are just in case you want to play the game. The link to the game will be in the description box below. That being said, let's get into it. We officially finished the game around midnight. It was an intense challenge, but it felt extra special because I worked on it with my partner. Once we finished, we shared the game with some friends to play. They had a great time and thought it was really fun, but they also mentioned that it was a bit challenging. One of my friends, for example, spent quite a bit of time trying to get through the third level. Since I already knew where all the hammies were placed, it was hard for me to gauge the difficulty. By stepping back and imagining myself as a new player, I can see how it might feel tricky. The third level doesn't really follow the same pattern as the first two, which might catch players off guard. If I were to remake this game or if I had more time, I'd definitely add more hints and clear instructions to make it more enjoyable. Considering that we only had one day to make this game, and the fact that we're both pretty new to this, it's more of a fun personal project than a polished official release. That being said, I've learned a lot from this experience and I'll definitely use what I learned in future projects. What made this project so fulfilling was turning our vision into actionable steps. I often get stuck in the daydreaming part, but this time I took our excitement and made it happen. It started with the vision, figuring out which medium could bring it to life in a day and breaking the process down into tasks such as drawing, designing the setting, gameplay, etc. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It means the world to me. Your support, likes, and comments truly encourage me to keep creating consistently. I'll see you in the next video.